Salimus It's like playing Chase the Composer as he changes your part on the fly in real time, right? Hey. It's all a part of the gig. Uh, you know, it's like, the, well, the technology is here to do this. Part so. of the composing process for an album like this, which relies so heavily on, on vocalists, either choirs or soloists, is that you really want to hear the sound of what you're writing being sung by actual singers before you commit to recording it. Because what you'll often find is that the moment singers get involved, your music has a tendency to want to take on a different tempo than when you originally conceived it. Like when you write for orchestra alone, any sort of tempo will fly, they can just play it. But when you start working with singers and languages, you need to accommodate words. And vowel sounds, consonants, they all take up time. And so every time I write a piece like this, especially for something where the creative stakes are as high as an album like To Sugar the Sky, I always like to bring in demo singers just to sit with them and work on tempos with them and work on diction and see, see you know, what combinations of notes are particularly uh, difficult for them to get out in the time I've allotted. And also sometimes just to hear like how they would like to hold certain notes in, in the phrases and things. <laughs> So it really helps to have a group of collaborators like uh, this tenor EJ who you just heard who came in and worked with me on my Ovid movement. So that's part of the creative process. Thank you all for being a part of this journey.